Hello YouTube, welcome to another episode of Walt's How To's and Reviews. Today I'm going to be covering how I epoxied my garage floor, or perhaps a better title is what coatings I put on my garage floor and how I did it. So the reason I made this channel is I do way too much research. I know it's something some people would say is a flaw of mine, but I just spend way too much time researching. You know, I spent weeks and hours and hours and hours of trying to figure out what I wanted to put on my garage floor. And what I want to do is take all that information, give you the cliff notes so you don't have to do those steps, and educate you as quickly as possible. So feel free to use the timeline to skip ahead to a part that you're looking for, or sit back and enjoy the video. First thing is, what should you put on a concrete garage floor? There's a lot of different coatings out there and there's a lot of different pros and cons to each coating. The five coatings that I have listed on the screen right now are the most common types of coatings that you're gonna see when you're researching what to put on a garage floor. The two that I have highlighted are the two that I chose to put on my floor. The reason epoxy is a superior coating is it can be applied very thick and high discrepancies and most importantly it's gonna stick better than all the other coatings you see here to concrete and prevent peeling. Polyurethane, however, is superior in other ways in that it doesn't scratch as easy as the other ones and epoxy, it's impact resistant, it doesn't discolor from UV rays, and it is just good to be driven on and that sort of thing. However, the con with polyurethane is it doesn't stick to concrete as well as epoxy, and aliphatic polyurethane is the best polyurethane for a floor coating on a garage floor. So my goal was I wanted to have something that was gonna last the longest, and I concluded from my research that putting polyurethane over an epoxy would give me the longest lasting garage floor coating. The other three that you see, the polycuramine, polyurea, and polyaspartic, are basically hybrids between the epoxy and the polyurethane where they try to take all the benefits of those and mix them together. However, they're not gonna stick as well as an epoxy and they're not gonna be as durable as a polyurethane. So if you're looking for longevity, I feel that those are the two that you should put on your garage floor. But if you're looking for something that's simple and easier to apply, you may wanna consider the top three because you only need to use one coating and it just makes the job a lot simpler. So to recap why we're going to use two coatings, the polyurethane as a top coat is going to resist yellowing over time with sun exposure. It's more chemically resistant, impact and scratch resistant. However, the epoxy is going to actually form a stronger bond to the concrete and prevent peeling, as well as it's thicker so it's going to hide little indiscrepancies better. So what exactly is epoxy? Like the other coatings I just showed, it's basically just a polymer. It's a special kind of polymer. Um, it contains epoxide groups called polyepoxides, hence the name epoxy. And polymers are basically just large molecules that repeat and cross-link and they give them unique characteristics that is very durable. It, you can think of it, it's just basically a strong plastic-like substance that starts out as a liquid and ends as a strong solid. You can separate epoxies into two different groups, one that comes with a carrier agent and one that does not. So a carrier agent is basically a liquid that it's submerged in that's going to evaporate during the curing process and water can be the carrier or a solvent can be the carrier. So there's water based, solvent based and then there's epoxies that don't have any carrier agent. It's just 100% solid. Everything you put down is going to be there in the end. Nothing actually evaporates. So epoxies are made of two parts. You mix them together, and after you mix them together, it'll start to harden. One of the pros of water-based epoxies is you have an increased pot life, meaning after you mix it, it takes longer for it to harden, giving you more time to apply it. Another pro is the fumes are not toxic. Water vapor isn't toxic, and it has an increased viscosity, and in some substrates, it has the ability to penetrate a little bit better. However, the cons are, as soon as you dilute it with water, it loses some of its strength. Um, it also, the water is going to decrease its uh, resistant properties in both physically and chemically. Of the three epoxies we're considering, water base, solvent base, and 100% solid base, water is the least in terms of durability, longevity, and resistance. So naturally, if you don't put a carrier agent in there, the solid base epoxy is going to be the best for durability, longevity, and resistance. It's the thickest, strongest, and it also doesn't have any toxic fumes, nothing's evaporating. However, there are some cons, such as 
you have a short pot life. After you mix the two together, it's gonna start hardening and it can happen very quickly. If you're a do-it-yourselfer like me and this is your first time using epoxy, that can be problematic. The other con is because it's so thick and doesn't have the same viscosity as something with a carrier agent, it isn't able to seep down into the pores of some substrates and grab on as well as something that is a little bit thinner. Um, so the last one we'll talk about is solvent base. The pros are, as I just mentioned, it has a higher viscosity. So in some cases, it increases its ability to penetrate, grab onto substrates, and prevent peeling. It also is better than the water base at resisting chemicals. And it has an increased pot life, which is more time to work with it. The cons are, um, it does lose some strength, and the fumes are toxic. So you're gonna need to wear a respirator and have some protection. Other than the pros and cons I just discussed, one of the hardest things for a do-it-yourself first-time user of epoxy is knowing how much epoxy you're gonna need to cover your garage floor. There's a lot of reasons for this. You know, if your concrete's 20 years old versus one year old, how well you prepped it, how much is gonna sink into the concrete, as well as how much you actually wanna put on, how thick you want it to be. You might start out thick and then by the end to make it actually work, you have to go thinner and then you have different consistency levels. So that's something where you want to figure out how can I buy Buy more than I need and return it. So online is going to have your most availability in terms of there's a plethora of different epoxies you can buy out there and the pricing is going to be good but it's going to be hard to go and get more if you need more and also because this stuff is heavy returning it there may be some cost with that. When I did my research, that seemed to be the biggest problem people came across is they thought they had enough and they found out that they didn't. So if you're gonna go local to a place where you can actually buy it, return it easily, go get more if you need it, you've basically got local paint stores that just deal with uh, coatings and paint, and then you're gonna have hardware stores that sell everything. And at the hardware store, you're not gonna have as much of a selection, and things are really geared towards the residential do-it-yourselfer, so longevity, durability, that kind of stuff really isn't the top priority. It's more about ease of application and just making sure that the homeowner is gonna be able to get it done, but at the same time, the price isn't very favorable and they're not really designing it to have the longest lasting effect. So your paint store is gonna be in the middle in terms of there's gonna be more selection than a hardware store but less than online. They usually have decent pricing and you got that benefit of if you need more, you can go get it really quick. If you buy too much, you can return it as long as you haven't mixed it up. And what I found at the paint store too, they're going to have products designed for other uses, possibly like an industrial grade that's a little bit more heavy duty that's going to last longer, but a lot more difficult to work with and you might need some expertise when using so. So that's the option I chose to go with was a local paint store. I used Diamond Vogel mainly because it was within walking distance of my house and they actually, when I researched the different paint stores in my area, to me seemed to have the best epoxy for what I was looking for. So I chose to go with a solvent-based epoxy. Um, you know, there's good, better, best, water, solvent, 100% solids. I didn't go with the 100% solids for two main reasons. One is the pot life is short. I didn't have anyone to help me. and It was my first time using it. And then I wanted to make sure it wouldn't peel later down the road. So the solvent-based epoxy is gonna penetrate the substrate a little bit better. And I'll explain later, but I chose to acid etch my garage floor as opposed to grinding off the top layer with a turbo diamond wheel cup and I wanted to make sure that I wasn't going to have peeling issues and I'm going to put a polyurethane on top of it anyway so I wasn't as concerned about using the 100% solid durable stuff because that isn't what was going to be exposed to the actual physical and chemical stuff that is going to be on top of it. So once I knew I was looking for a local solvent-based thick epoxy, this was the best one I could find. It really isn't designed for residential use. It's an industrial grade, uh, but it, you know it's gonna work just fine on concrete garage floor. You can see the stuff that I highlighted is the important stuff. Um, it was also, out of all the competitors I looked at locally, the thickest in terms of it was drying five to 10 mils thick. Um, you can see it had a high solids percentage, so there wasn't too much of that carrier agent in there. But I still had that pot life of two to three hours, so I wasn't worried about it drying up too quickly on me and having issues being in the first time me using epoxy. 
So the first step I did, which is completely optional, I did not have to do this, is I wanted the slabs in my concrete garage floor to be even from slab to slab. Still have that grade so water would drain out, but you can see that my garage floor had sunken tremendously. That corner right there was down about, I don't know, four to eight inches. Um, you can see the line where it was originally. All six of my slabs had sunken down and water was no longer draining out of my garage. It would pull up in the corner and on that crack on those front two slabs there by the door. So I chose to have it mud jacked where they drilled holes into my garage floor as shown and then they used this machine to pump mud underneath the, the slabs which raised them up back to their original spot as well as in between the slabs where that crack is made them somewhat uh, level to where you weren't going to have huge discrepancies after I put the epoxy down. So given that that step is optional, the first thing you need to do to prepare your floor to accept the epoxy is you got to clean it and you have to open up the pores. Um, or you have to take off a little bit of a layer and create a rough surface so the epoxy has something to grab onto and prevent peeling. The two choices with that is to do an acid etch. I chose to use muriatic acid and do that. Or you can physically grind down that top layer of your concrete, which I chose not to do. Mainly because I didn't want to go rent a big machine to get it done. And the wheel grinder that I do have, I felt would take too long. And since I was going to use a solvent-based epoxy, I didn't think I would have any issues with it actually grabbing onto the substrate and peeling later on. The two products I used to clean my concrete was that Rust-Oleum degreaser and then the Zep concrete cleaner. Uh, my garage is 20 years old, so I had a lot of oil build up over the years in certain spots. So I used the Rust-Oleum to pour that on the oil first and then let that sit in. Um, and then you come back about 20 minutes later, scrub it, and then I use the Zep Concrete Cleaner to just clean the entire surface of the floor. The Zep is a concentrated solution that makes up to 20 gallons. I poured the whole gallon into a 5 gallon and then I filled that 5 gallon up with water. Um, I came back to the spots that I'm scrubbing now that had the Rust-Oleum on and that strong solution of a 4 to 1 mix with the 5 gallon, I poured the strong solution on those oil spots again and then I used about half the five gallon and then I refilled the five gallon with water and I took a hose and first I actually wetted the outside of my driveway just to make sure that it was diluted if some of those uh, cleaning agents got on my driveway and then I also just wetted my entire garage floor with the hose so that it was somewhat diluted and then I took that full five gallon bucket and just poured it all over my garage. Um, then as you can see, I scrubbed it all in in all six slabs and made sure that I gave it a good uh, physical you know, rubbing to help clean that agent off of there, that cleaning agent. And then what was actually surprising, <clears throat> I, after that I power washed it and power washing took a long time. It was uh, a lot harder to get all that stuff out of there. I could tell every time I'd re-power wash there would be like a white residue and I just kept power washing until I got all of that uh, cleaner agent off of the concrete and out of my garage. So this next step you can see <clears throat> I'm wearing a lot of protective gear. This is muriatic acid which you know has some toxic fumes so you're definitely going to need a respirator. Talk to your local hardware or paint store about you know which one to use. I use a full face mask one. You could just use a respirator and goggles but you don't want this stuff getting on your skin. You don't want it getting in your eyes and you don't want to be breathing it. You can see it's kind of um, off gassing and fuming just by pouring it in there. Also, I chose to wear uh, long uh, pants just in case it splattered up on my legs. If it gets on you, you probably won't notice it at first, but it will start to burn your skin. It won't kill you, but it's going to be a huge inconvenience. The last thing is you want to make sure you have shoes that you don't care about. Um, I use these cheap uh, shoes I got at Target for snow, but they have rubber soles that go all the way up and around the shoe, so it wasn't going to get on my socks. You don't want it getting on your socks and burning your feet. So I mixed about a one-to-one -one mix with the muriatic acid. That's extremely strong. You don't have to have it that strong. I just had a lot of muriatic acid, two gallons, and I wanted to make sure I used it all. So it took me one-to-one -one mix, one gallon to do it, and I did it twice. So um, I used one gallon, mixed it up with a gallon of water, and then I sprayed it on my concrete. You can see here, it, uh, if, as long as it's bubbling and creating a little bit of that... Uh, foam and that off gas that you see you know it's doing its job and you just want to make sure you spread it as even as possible over your whole garage floor um, let it sit in for a minute or two and then you can wash it off it's going to take you a while to uh, do the entire floor and uh, 
I did this twice just because I really wanted to make sure since I wasn't going to um, grind it down that I opened up the pores. So you can see after I poured it on, I uh, scrubbed it in and then I gave it a good power wash and did that twice. So since I had my floor mud jacked, I was worried that that wet mud would be evaporating. So a test you can do to make sure there's no moisture is you take some plastic, cover all the sides with duct tape, come back in a few days and make sure that there's no moisture underneath that, which there was none for me. So the next step I did is I took this polyurethane uh, self-leveling caulk that's made for concrete driveways and garages, and I wanted to fill all the gaps um, the in between the slabs. So I used a little bit of backer rod here because there was a crack in between there and um, just goes down to dirt so I didn't want the self-leveling stuff to seep down in there and then this stuff is extremely messy and hard to work with so be careful if you are going to do this step. Um, the respirator is overkill but it's not good for you this polyurethane to be breathing in the solvents that are with it so use a respirator and it's kind of like maple syrup in a tube. So unlike caulking, when you release the pressure, it continues to ooze out because of gravity. So you actually would need to like flip it upside down. If you just lay it on its side, it'll continue to ooze out. So make sure you have paper towels. You want to fill the crack up to where it's pretty much level slab to slab. You will notice sometimes the little bubbles will form. If you pop them with a razor blade while it's wet, uh, it'll self level and they'll disappear. So to my shock, I come back the next day. Some areas like there looked pretty good, but then all these bubbles had formed and I'm not sure why this happened. My suspicion is there was some moisture escaping, but it was coming through the cracks. And since I sealed them up, they were still trying to come out the cracks and now we're trapped. So. This polyurethane stuff says give it seven days before you paint it or coat it. So I let all the cra uh, bubbles develop that we're going to develop, gave it enough time. And then I had to do the annoying step of come back and I had to cut out all of these uh, bubbles. So it actually only took me about an hour and if I could do it again, I probably just would have used caulking. I thought the self-leveling would save me some time rather than uh, scraping it off and just making sure it was level. But it actually cost me time and who knows, the caulking could have done it as well. So. This was an annoying step that I had to do that hopefully won't happen to you, but it's part of why I make these videos, just to make sure everyone learns from my mistakes and uh, how to fix it if this stuff does happen. So uh, as you can see, I cut out all the bubbles and then the next step I did was I just took regular caulking. Um, it was a siliconized 55 year caulking from Sharon Williams and I put a little bit of excess in all those areas that I cut out and then I smoothed it out with a five in one. You could use a putty knife, just a smooth surface. You could even use, you know, a piece of cardboard and just smooth it out so it was level and smooth. So when I put the epoxy down, you w hopefully wouldn't notice any discrepancies. My slabs weren't perfectly, you know, level from slab to slab. So I was hoping that I would put on the epoxy thick enough to where it would just look like one smooth finished floor and it didn't have, you know, joints in between. You'll see at the end it came pretty close, but if you have the right lighting, you can see it. But I'm super happy with the result. And in my opinion, I just think it's a better appearance than having those cracks in there. You know, it's going to be an area where dirt and dust can collect. And a lot of my tools and my tool chest are on wheels and I wanted to just roll from slab to slab really smooth and not get caught up on those. Um, you might have noticed I painted the foundation around my garage black. I used the uh, product that I have up on the screen right now. It's a one part epoxy, which basically is just a paint. And I think paint would have worked better because as you can see, it peeled off really easy. I put a piece of masking tape there, ripped it off, came right off. So I thought, hey, I'll use a low tack, easy removal tape that's made for freshly painting surfaces to avoid that. And it still happened. So if you're going to do that like I did and paint the outside edges a different color, epoxy at first and then paint it so you don't have to do that step twice like I did. So now I'm preparing the outer edges to have the epoxy on there and in Colorado at least there's a, a spacer in between the foundation and the slab. It's some kind of like particle board. So right now I'm caulking that area, smoothing it out and then I'm also laying down some caulking where I put the tape line to make sure no epoxy goes up underneath the tape and to get that nice clean appearance. It's called tape caulking to get that nice clean line. You especially want to do it where you're going to end the epoxy from inside to outside your garage. You lay down your tape, put a thin bead of caulk on the edge, and you'll get that nice crisp clean line as you see. So where they mud jacked, they put quick creed in there and those holes weren't exactly level. So I used this uh, diamond turbo cup wheel grinder to smooth those out as well as take off some of the... Uh, 
liquid nail I had around my stairs that were there and there was also some silicone in areas on my floor so I used that to grind it out and smooth it um, and then the last step I did was just one more time sweep out the garage make sure there's no dirt or dust and then I was ready to start applying my epoxy so an important step before you mix this epoxy make sure everything is ready because once you mix it that pot life starts ticking and you only have a certain amount of time to apply it so you can see I had everything ready, I laid out a tarp, I put in the part A, part B, it was a one-to-one -one mix for this epoxy, um, put it in a five gallon bucket, then you stir it up with a drill and a little uh, mixer. Um, if you're using a solvent-based epoxy like I did, this stuff's extremely flammable, so you wanna make sure you're working with tools that don't leave any sparks or anything like that. Um, and just don't be smoking cigarettes or anything because you can start a fire. So you mix it up really good, make sure there's no clumps, no chunks, and then it's a nice smooth consistency throughout. And then you're ready to start actually putting the epoxy on the floor. So a quick note, I'm gonna link everything that I used in the description below. Um, I bought some spike shoes on Amazon. Just buy them, they're like 20 bucks and it's gonna make everything easier and if you run into trouble, it's gonna help get you out of it. So I highly recommend it. I wouldn't do this without the spike shoes. That being said, if you buy the spike shoes I bought, read the instructions because I thought how hard and complicated is this, I don't have to read the instructions. I actually put them on wrong. You can see there was excess straps that I tied up, but it made them loose and I didn't figure this out till I put on the clear coat and having them tight on my feet was a huge, it was a, it was a completely different experience. It was so much easier to work with. This first coat that I'm putting down, I actually left some scrape marks in it with the shoes because it was hard to pick them up. So that's just a little quick note. Um, so you can see, I just poured the epoxy in a line out onto the slabs and then I used a roller to start mixing it around. Um, in hindsight, I would have gone ahead and got a squeegee. It would have made it a lot easier and taken less time. Um, but the roller does work. It's not, an, it's not a necessity, but it did take a lot of time to spread it out and make sure I had an even coat everywhere. Um, and it's not rocket science, guys. You're just putting a liquid on the ground, then you smooth it out so you have a nice consistent uh, finish where it's all even as even as possible. So. Um, Pretty easy, you can see I'm just uh, spreading it around. I'm going over it, uh, you know, up and down and then side to side and just using each slab as kind of a marker to break it up into sections and work with it. So a couple other quick notes, learn from my mistakes. Um, you wanna have two rollers, you wanna have, uh, you can have an 18 inch, I use a nine inch roller. You want it to be a small nap that isn't gonna shed and you are going to need a brush to get the edges. I thought I could push the epoxy to the edge with the roller, but it ended up going up on the side over the tape and it didn't really get it in there. So I had to use a brush. And then with the second coat, I used a mini roller, which did make it a lot easier to get those edges. So I'd, I'd recommend having a thin mini roller, again, designed for epoxy, um, thin nap that's not going to shed at all because the epoxy will, it's very tacky and it'll rip up the uh, roller and leave little residues in there. So I actually put down six gallons for my first coat. And you can see from the, the sheet, it said it could cover up to 250 square foot per gallon, but I used six. So I got less than 100 square foot per gallon. Now I did want to put on that first coat as thick as possible, mainly because I wanted to cover up any discrepancies and try to give that smooth finish to where you couldn't see from slab to slab. So I put it on as thick as I could and it worked out really well. I think it looked great the first coat. I wasn't worried about making it perfect with all the roller marks because I was gonna put flakes in, I was gonna add another coat. Another quick note is you should wear long pants and long sleeves. You can see I got some epoxy on my leg there and this stuff doesn't come off with soap and water. You're gonna have to use some kind of solvent. I use rubbing alcohol, but it stinks terribly. It, it can be an irritant to your skin and cause some issues. So here's me applying the second coat and as you can see, I decided to wear long pants and uh, long sleeve. You definitely want some uh, rubber gloves. I use some like kitchen gloves for washing dishes and if you're using solvent like I am, you definitely gotta wear a respirator. This stuff is very toxic and deadly and this is industrial grade stuff. Like it, you're not supposed to use it on the inside because it is so toxic with the fumes and you know, this is the garage so it was fine. But my house did smell like fumes the first night with those six gallons that I put on. The two gallons I used on the second coat, 
I didn't need as much and it wasn't as bad with the fumes, especially on the inside of my house. I also taped off my garage door because it wasn't a perfect seal. So it allowed uh, some of those fumes to seep into my house. So that's another quick note that you can learn from my mistakes. So I tried to just put it in a pan and roll it out thinking that would be good. But I found, as you can see there, I just, if you just pour it on the floor and then smooth it out, it's a lot easier. You can see with the second coat, I had the mini roller right there to help me get the edges and I just worked square by square. So I got that first square really wet and then I started putting down the flakes. Um, I used the flakes, um, the Rust-Oleum, I got them from Home Depot and you can see I just put it in my hand and likely shook my hand and that seemed to, for me the easiest way to get a nice consistent finish. I used eight bags of this stuff so I put it on really thick. It wasn't complete coverage but um, the pretty thick amount of chips. You can use as much or as little as you want and it uh, worked out pretty well. I was really happy with the consistency and how it looks. So I just worked slab to slab and uh, continued on. It took me about two hours to uh, put on the second coat and put the flakes in and then I was uh, ready to put on my top coat. Another thing you guys can learn from my mistakes is I took a leaf blower and I blew out all the loose chips after I'd given it time to dry. And if I could do it again, I would have used a shop vac instead of blowing it out to suck those up. And I would have used the one that has like a scraper squeegee to help get off all those loose ones that weren't completely embedded in the epoxy. Because when I went to put on the clear coat, there was still chips that were loose that started coming up and flinging off my roller. Um, I put two top coats on and the second coat that had stopped happening, but it did create a little bit of a texture. I kind of wanted a smooth surface I'm not disappointed, but I think the texture was okay because it um, will make it kind of anti-skip. But that's just something else. If you want that smooth appearance with the top coats, um, you want to scrape it and get off all those loose chips. Um, so again, if you want that, you can learn from my mistakes. So you can see me here mixing up my polyurethane um, clear coat. This is a PPG product. Again, it's not intended for residential. It's industrial grade. It was the best stuff I could find. Um, I got it up on the screen right now. I was also able to purchase this at the Diamond Vogel that's right next to my house so I could go get more if I needed to. Um, I put on two coats and I did three gallons each. So three gallons for each coat at 600, or I'm sorry, 500 square foot in my garage. With the polyurethane, you can't put it on as thick as epoxy. It says about three mils is all you're gonna get after it dries. Um, so I put it on as thick as I could. You can see me mixing it up here. Again, same as the epoxy, it's solvent based, the good uh, aliphatic polyurethane. I didn't wanna bore you with more tech on which polyurethane to use and there wasn't as much uh, debate over what's the polyurethane. It was pretty much most people said that was the best polyurethane when I was researching. Also, if you're gonna research, try to find science-based stuff. Pretty much a company that is applying it or selling their um, product they're gonna claim theirs is the best or they're at least gonna go over the benefits of that but they're not gonna give you all the cons of it as well as the pros and cons of all the different ones which again is why I make these videos to help educate you guys so that you know the pros and cons of everything and those one coat systems um, they work great and for residential use again I was trying to make this last as long as possible and it's overkill but I feel like a lot of people are gonna be the same boat as me I don't want to be doing this again I want it to last you know at least 20 years and that's why I chose to use the products I did. So you can see uh, in the picture, I got my uh, floodlight there that uh, is in the way of the camera. The reason I put that on and turn the light on is you can pick it up on the camera, but when you're actually standing over this stuff, it's really hard to tell where the clear coat is and where it's not. So if you have some light shining on it, it helps you can see the sheen more so you can actually see where you started and where you finished. So you can see I'm just, uh, I put it all on the floor and then I'm just smoothing it out, going over it multiple times. Again, it's not rocket science. You just pour it on the floor and then you start moving it around and spread it out so that you don't have thick and thin areas. So you have a nice consistent coat. Um, more is better, but you can't use too much of the polyurethane. Again, the thickest it can be is three mils thick. So pour a little bit out, start moving it around. You want it so it's not like water to where your, your roller isn't rolling, but it'll roll and it'll have a little bit of tackiness to it. And then I just went over it, you know, again, multiple times. I used the slabs as starting and ending points and I went over it up and down and then side to side. 
for these are your top coats, that last coat, you wanna make sure you go over it in the same direction and hit every surface, every square foot with your roller in the same direction to give it that nice, smooth, clean appearance at the end. Um, I'm really happy with the result. You can see I had to repaint my foundation because when I pulled off the tape, it uh, pulled off some of that one part epoxy that I wasn't very impressed with. But the, uh, the actual epoxy and polyurethane I put down, I mean, that stuff is not coming up. I got a couple drops outside of my uh, garage and that was so hard to clean up. I was really impressed with this stuff and I'm super happy with the result. You can still see some of the uh, grooves when the light hits it right but when the light doesn't hit it right as you can see in this picture it, it looks like one consistent smooth finished floor and i'm super happy thanks for watching guys if you have questions about this stuff put it in the comments i'll be sure to answer them and i'll see you next time